Hi everyone. I'm going to give a simple guide to effective prompt writing for generative AI. One of the challenges with generative AI and language models is that they don't come with instruction manuals. So it can take time to get a feel for how the language model responds to the kinds of prompts that you give it. So there aren't any perfect prompts and it's not like a science where we can, you know, very clearly explain exactly what it is that you need to say to the language model in order to get the response that you're looking for. But there are some guidelines that you can use that will make things a little bit better in terms of the output that you get from the language model. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today. So just a little bit of um, context and background. Uh, language models aren't search engines. They generate their responses from the ground up using the prompt that you provide, which means that they use the information that you give to the chatbot to structure the kind of response that uh, it gives back to you. So it's not like it goes away to a database and it identifies the information that you're looking for and it gives you back that information. It literally makes up the information in real time based on the context that you've established as part of the prompt. And the more context you provide, the more useful the response from the language model is likely to be. I said that there's no perfect prompts, and the only way to really figure out how to use generative AI is to use generative AI. Through a process of iterative testing and refinement over multiple steps, you would probably be able to improve your ability to write effective prompts. The way that we think about um, writing prompts is to structure the prompts in a way that you can consistently create a useful context. And one of the most useful uh, structures that I found is role, goal, and instruction. So you tell the model what experience it has. You give it a persona. You tell it what it's good at and what kind of uh, characteristics it has that would be useful for what response you're trying to get out of it. You tell it what the outcome uh, of this interaction should be. So you give it a goal and you give it an instruction. You tell it what to do. And there are other ways that you can add context. You can provide examples of what you're looking for. This is something called few shot prompting. So you can include in the prompt, um, you know, one, two, three examples of what kinds of things you're looking for um, as a response from the model. And you can also give it step-by-step -step instructions and this is sometimes called chain of thought prompting. And all of these things will help to establish the framework or the context that the language model is going to use to create the response that it's going to give back to you. Now, just before I give an example, um, I should note that there are some cautions that you need to um, take. So don't upload any personally identifiable information, either your own or a service users or any of your colleagues or university sensitive information. Um, basically, anything that could be used to identify particular people or institutions is probably something that you should avoid uploading into the language model. You need to really be aware that generative AI makes things up. This is called hallucination. Um, even when what it gives you sounds plausible and authoritative, you need to recognize that it's almost always making things up it's very rare that the responses from language models are grounded in some kind of object of truth or reality. And related to this, you are responsible for anything that you submit. So if you're using this to inform some of the work that you're doing for university, or if you're an academic and you are using language models to um, prepare something that you're going to put your name on, you are responsible for anything that you submit. You don't get to come back and say the language model made it up. Um, and it's also just worth noting that generative AI is biased and it tends to conform to a specific worldview. So now I'm going to move on and give an example using Claude. Claude is a language model from Anthropic, and I find that it's very, very good with uh, writing tasks. So what I'm going to do is uh, I've prepared a prompt, and you can see I've given it a role. So in this prompt, uh, I'm just going to paste it here into Claude. And then I've got a goal. And I'll just add that goal here. And then I've got an instruction. So I'm just going to read this out. I'm going to tell Claude uh, to take on a persona. And that persona is that Claude is an experienced lecturer and personal tutor with many years of experience giving supportive and constructive feedback to university students. 
you, I'm telling the language model, you also have extensive knowledge of the UK health and social care sector with experience working in the NHS, as well as in NGO and social work contexts. Now, this is the goal. Uh, I'm currently working on a module in uh, on interprofessional education in a school of health and social care in a UK-based higher education institution. The task I'm working on is to prepare a presentation with recommendations for improvements to a service user's experience of health and social care. I would like you to give me feedback on a sample of my work, which will help me to create a more structured, clear, and well-argued submission. And then this is the instruction, which you can see I've broken up into steps. I say, please, one, evaluate the sample of work that I've attached. Two, give me feedback that's focused on the document as a whole. And three, provide suggestions for how I can improve the presentation. Now, I could supplement this context or this prompt with a few examples <clears throat> of the kinds of things that I might be looking for, but I'm not going to do that. I think this will probably be enough to get some reasonable feedback. The other nice thing about Claude is that the free version allows you to um, upload attachments. Um, I usually default to PDF. Um, so I'm going to go here to my downloads and I'm going to pick this. Now, this presentation isn't something that I prepared for this. It's just a lecture that I gave, but it's just good enough that it'll give us an idea of the kinds of feedback that Claude will give. So Claude's very helpful. It says, thank you for providing the background and um, information and sample document. And then it goes through giving the evaluation of the sample, gives me feedback on the document as a whole, comments on the clarity and conciseness of what I've uploaded. It tells me how relevant the presentation that I've uploaded to the task is. So this is where that context is really, really useful. I've told it what the task is that I'm working on. And the more information you can give it about the task, the more useful this feedback is going to be. It comments on the balance and objectivity of the document that I've uploaded. And then it starts giving suggestions for improvement. Um, so this is all, uh, you know, super useful. And I'm sure that there's a ton here that I could use to improve the quality of the document that I've uploaded. Um, and just, just as an example, uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to take this feedback about tailoring the content to the audience. And I'm going to say, um, can you give me more guidance on how I can tailor this piece of work to a specific audience? So one of the things that is really good to understand with language models is that the iterative nature of the interaction is what really provides the value. So what it's doing now is it's actually using all of this information that it's given me as more context. So the more we interact, the more we engage with the language model, the more useful the feedback um, it's going to give um, is going to be. So here it, it kind of breaks it down into... Uh, different contexts. So if I was going to provide this information to health um, healthcare professionals, I might want to structure it in this way. If I'm going to give it to healthcare administrators and pol policymakers, I might want to use this. If I'm talking to service users and caregivers, I might want to do this. Healthcare students and educators. So you can see the the value of the language model is not so much that it can provide the feedback, although that's super useful, it's also useful to then use that feedback to start engaging in a conversation with the language model where we can dig deeper into how it might be useful for me to prepare the, the work that I'm eventually going to submit. So that's just an example of how to use um, structured prompting techniques to get better responses from language models where we use the prompt to really expand the total size of the context window that it uses to give us feedback. So I hope this has been useful, and if you have any questions, um, I'd really love to hear back from you.